Okay. Let's see. Uh, they can hear me, maybe. Maybe it's feeble. I have to be closer to the laptop. Can someone? Yeah, could, could some participants say whether they can hear me? Yes, we can hear Online you. Participants. <laughs> Apparently, it's really good. <laughs> okay, I'll stay close to the laptop. Uh, okay. Okay, yeah. Uh, uh, Dalhaus et al. and Svitkin et al. they were uh, motivated uh, by concrete applications in uh, data placement and in parallel processing networks. Uh, I, I won't go into those details. Uh, we studied LP norm multi-way cut uh, motivated by theoretical generalization. Uh, note that uh, if k equals two, that is we have two terminals, then the problem is uh, simply min st cut for any p. It is, this is uh, the easy case, solvable case, polynomial time solvable case. And um, moreover, uh, LP norm multi-way cut is a unified generalization of both uh, multi-way cut and min-max multi-way cut. Uh, so it is natural to ask if we can get uh, good approximations for uh, this, this more general problem. Right. Uh, there is a fundamental structural difference uh, between the case of p equals one and p greater than one. Uh, for p equals one, uh, that is for the vanilla multi-way cut, uh, one can show that each part in an optimal k partition will be connected after removing the edges crossing the partition. So multi-way cut is also phrased as the problem of uh, removing a least weight subset of edges in order to disconnect every pair of terminals. But this is no longer true for p greater than one. Turns out that uh, the parts in an optimal k partition may not be connected after removing the edges crossing the partition. And this is one such example. Uh, I, I won't go into details. Though. OK, a uh, quick summary of what is known about multi-way cut. Uh, this is a very well-studied problem in approximation algorithms literature. Uh, uh, it, it has led to very interesting rounding techniques and non-trivial integrality gap instances, uh, connections to geometric embeddings, and so on. Uh, it's a fundamental problem. A lot of uh, nice work has happened in approximation algorithms for multi-way cut. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, it was uh, first introduced by Dalhouse et al. They showed that it is NP-hard for k equals 3 terminals. Uh, there is a nice uh, uh, LP relaxation uh, that one can write for multi-way cut. This was first given by Chalinescu, Karloff, and Rabani. Uh, I'll call this as the CKR relaxation. Turns out that the integrality gap of the CKR relaxation is the precise approximability of multi-way cut, assuming the unique games conjecture. And pinning down this integrality gap is still an open problem. And the current best lower bound that we know on the integrality gap is uh, 1.20016. Uh, there is an easy isolating cuts approach to getting a two approximation. This was given by uh, Dalhouse et al. And I, I'll go into this uh, shortly. Uh, and the current best approximation factor that we know for multi-way cut is 1.2965 via the CKR relaxation. And as I mentioned, the inapproximability coincides with the integrality gap. Right, uh, min-max multi-way cut, this was uh, introduced by Svitkin and Tardosh. Uh, they showed that it is NP-hard for k equals four terminals, and it is NP-hard even on trees. Uh, and one can write a natural linear programming relaxation for this. This, uh, this has an integrality gap of k over two. Uh, this is easy to construct. We'll see this shortly. Uh, the approximation factor of the isolating cuts approach turns out to be k. Uh, the current best approximation factor that we can get for uh, min-max multi-way cut is order log n. Recall that k is the number of terminals. It can be at most the number of vertices. So I'm going to call this as a log n approximation. Uh, th this was uh, given by Bansal, Feige, Proud Gamer, Makarichar, Nagarajan, Naur, and Schwartz. Uh, they also showed that if you, have, if you want to beat the 
isolating cuts based appro approximation factor. If you want to beat that K factor, uh, then the approximation factor needs some dependence on N. You cannot hope to beat that K factor without throwing any dependence on N in the approximation factor. That, that's how you should interpret the bottom right result there. Okay, let, let me tell our results for LP norm multiway cut. Uh, we show that it is NP hard for K equals four terminals and it is NP hard on planar graphs. Uh, one can write a convex program programming relaxation for LP norm multiway cut. Turns out the integrality gap is K raised to one minus one over P divided by two. Uh, the approximation factor of the isolating cuts approach is K raised to one minus one over P times uh, some constant. Uh, and uh, the main result of the work is an order log squared and approximation for LP norm multiway cut. And once again, we also show that uh, if you need to beat the naive approximation factor based on the isolating cuts approach, uh, then you, the approximation factor should have some dependence on N. You cannot hope to improve on this uh, K raised to one minus one over P in, in general. Question. Sorry, yeah, the integrality gap lower bounds. Integrality gaps are lower bounds, approximation factor are upper bounds. And yeah, inapproximability is also lower bounds. Yeah. Sorry, as P tends to one. It matches the so so when P is so good. So you should compare what happens when P equals one and P equals infinity. Okay. When P equals one, uh, okay, yeah, this is uh, which is not interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and when P equals, uh, yeah, P equals uh, infinity, again, the, this isolating cuts approach, it, P equals one, P equals infinity, it interpolates between two and K. And uh, yeah, this line does not interpolate. Wait, so okay. Uh, the... In this talk, I'll, I'll talk about these three uh, aspects: the convex programming relaxation, integrality gap, and then the isolating cuts approach and the uh, log squared and approximation. Uh, yeah, let, let's first get away with the convex program. Uh, you encounter an optimization problem. The first approach is write a convex program, round it, design the approximation algorithm, and then go home. Right? Uh, doesn't work here. Uh, so let, let's write the convex program. The most natural convex program is, uh, is this one. Uh, here, we have a variable x, v, i for each vertex v and each part i. Uh, this, is, this variable x, v, i is supposed to indicate uh, if vertex v is assigned to part i. So let, let's start with the constraints. The first constraint says that uh, each vertex v is assigned to exactly one of the k parts. The second constraint says that the i terminal t i is assigned to the i part. And of course, we have non-negativity constraints. And let, let's uh, start at the objective. Recall our objective is to minimize the one over p power of the sum of the p powers of the cut values. And in this formulation, uh, for an edge uv, this absolute value of the difference between x u i and x v i measures the amount of the edge UV, which is being cut because of part I. So if you impose integrality constraints on top of this, this will formulate LP norm multiway cut. And uh, th this objective here can be convexified. So drop the integrality constraints, you'll get a convex program here. And turns out uh, there is a simple example which shows large integrality gap. Simply take the star uh, where the leaves are the terminus. And it, it's easy to show that the integrality gap of uh, this instance is k raised to one minus one over. Uh, and th this, uh, this convex program that I showed when you specialize it to p equals one gives you the CKR relaxation. So this, this is the natural labeling based uh, convex program. 
Right. So the, the natural convex program has large integrality gap. Uh, next, I want to tell you about the isolating cuts approach. Most of you may be familiar with this approach. Uh, this is typically taught, uh, at least for multi-way cut, the vanilla multi-way multi cut. This is typically taught uh, in approximation algorithms course. Uh, but let me give you a slightly different perspective of this approach, which we were able to adapt to get the log squared and approximation. So I'll tell you the isolating cuts approach, analyze it fully, and then I'll sketch how to adapt this to get the log squared and approximation. Okay, uh, the isolating cuts approach, I'm going to think of this as uh, proceeding in, in three steps. Uh, the first step, uh, we are going to compute min cuts that isolate each terminal from the rest of the terminals. Okay. Next step, so we're, first step, we're going to compute min cut, which isolate each terminal from the rest of the terminal. So it's going to look like this. Next step, we are going to uncross these cuts to ensure that they are disjoint. So the picture is going to look like this. Now we could have some vertices which are not assigned to any of the parts, this, this white part here. So in the last step, we are going to aggregate these vertices into one of the parts to get a K partition with the i terminal being present in the i part. So this gives a feasible solution to multi-way cut and then um, we, we will analyze the approximation factor. Uh, I haven't told you how to uncross and how to aggregate. So let me go through the details here. Right, the first step, we are going to compute a min cut that isolates each terminal from the rest. So I'll call these as uh, SI. SI is a min TI to T minus TI cut. It's a min TI isolating cut. So the only terminal present in SI is the i terminal TI. That's the first step. We compute this, these K such cuts. Now these cuts, these SI sets could overlap. Recall that in multi-way cut, we need uh, partition. So these, these, we can't afford to have overlap. We need to uncross them. So that's what we're going to do in the second step. To uncross, we're going to rely on the posimodularity property of the graph cut function. What is posimodularity? Says that for any two subsets, A and B of vertices, the sum of the cut values of A minus B and B minus A is at most the sum of the cut values of A and B. You can prove this uh, either by direct edge counting or by observing that uh, any symmetric submodular function is in fact posimodular. Now, why is posimodularity useful? Well, suppose we have two overlapping sets. Remember, we had these SIs and SJs. Uh, so suppose they, they overlap. We want to uncross these. Also recall that uh, the overlapping region between SI and SJ will not contain any terminals. So here the pink vertices will correspond to terminals. Okay. So suppose we have two such sets, SI and SJ, which overlap. Now, posimodularity says that either the cut value of A minus B is at most the cut value of A, or the cut value of B minus A is at most the cut value of B. One of these two inequalities should hold. Now, if the first inequality holds, then we can uncross AB with A minus B, B. And if the second inequality holds, then we can uncross AB with A and B minus A. Now, this way of uncrossing will ensure that if A is a min TI isolating cut, so here A and B are the two overlapping sets, if A was a min TI isolating cut, then either way of uncrossing will guarantee that the set P is a min TI isolating cut. And similarly, on the, if B was a min TJ isolating cut, then either way of uncrossing will guarantee that Q is a min TJ isolating cut. And moreover, the union of the vertices covered by A and B is still the is, is still the union of the vertices covered by P and Q. And such an uncrossing will ensure that uh, the number of overlap, overlapping pairs will decrease. Okay. So we, we had these sets as size. At the, at the end of step one, we had these sets as size. We're going to look at each pair which overlap. You would have a problem because you will violate the. Oh, sorry. The question is if you have A and B which are overlapping, why not take A minus B and B minus A while uncrossing? Well, if you do that, then you will lose the covering property. 
you will have some vertices in the intersection which are nowhere. Right. So at the end, uh, there could be some vertices which are not covered, and we have to aggregate them. If we start building more of those vertices, then we have more decision to make, which is a pain. Uh -huh. And we, we don't know how to analyze the approximation. So we, already something is covered, so why would you want to lose it? Right, so at the end of step one, we had these SI sets. We're going to look at uh, pairs of SI sets which overlap. We test which of the two inequalities hold. Based on that, we are going to uncross. So here S3, S4, they overlap. If you test which of the two inequalities hold, you uncross, uncross, you keep doing this. Finally, you, are, you arrive at, um, at a collection of disjoint sets. I'll, I'll, I'll denote these disjoint sets by Q1 through QK. Uh, these disjoint sets still satisfy this nice property that QI is a min TI isolating cut. Okay, this is crucial. And so the only terminal that can be present in QI is the I terminal TI. And these, these sets are all pairwise disjoint. Okay, good. So we, we have k parts, uh, but we also have, we could have these remaining vertices, okay, which were not present in any of the SI sets to begin with. So after uncrossing, they are not present in any of the QI sets as well. So we need to aggregate these, part, these, these remaining vertices. I'll call this set as R. We need to aggregate these remaining vertices into one of the parts. So that, that's what we're going to do in the last step. How, will, how do we aggregate? We simply add the remaining vertices to an arbitrary part. So th this is what we had at the end of uh, uncrossing. Now we simply add these remaining vertices into, let's say, Q1. Now by doing this, we get a K partition, P1 through PK. I'll call the final solution as P1 through PK. This is our final solution. This is what we get at the end of isolating cuts approach. This, this, these PIs form a K partition of the vertex set with the i terminal being present in the i part. So this is a feasible solution. Let's analyze the approximation factor. So let, let's look at the optimum solution, optimum K partition for LP normal D big star. Let's say it's P1 star to PK star. Then two observations. First observation, look at PI star. PI star is a TI isolating cut. Now QI is a min TI isolating cut, which means the cut value of QI is at most the cut value of PI star. Second observation, what happens to the cut value of the aggregated part? Q1 union R is the aggregated part. What happens to the cut value of the aggregated part? Well, it's at most the cut value, it's, it's exactly the cut value of the complement, which is at most the sum of the cut values of Q2 through QK. Okay, so now let's uh, talk about the, the pth powers of the cut values of uh, our solution, P1 through PK. Okay, so let's take the sum of the pth powers of the cut values of P1 through PK. This inequality is because uh, the cut value of P1 is the cut value of Q1 union R, which is at most the sum of the cut values of the QIs. Okay. Now we have the pth power of a sum. How do you bound the pth power of the sum? you use Jensen's inequality. The number of terms in the sum is k minus one. So the pth power of the sum of k minus one terms is at most k minus one raised to p minus one times the sum of the pth powers of the individual terms. This is Jensen's inequality. And then now you can absorb the second term by throwing in this two factor. And then I'm also going to throw in the cut value of qi, q1 raised to p in there. And um, recall that the cut value of q I is at most the cut value of PI star. So I have this relationship. Now raising both left side and right side to one over P shows that uh, the solution is a K raised to one minus one over P approximation. Questions on this? Okay, that's the isolating cuts approach. We find min TI isolating cuts. And then we uncross use by Fossey modularity. And then we aggregated the remaining vertices. The analysis went through Jensen's inequality. Uh, Kartik? This is the, the three-step recipe. 
Uh, next, let me tell you how to adapt this. I'll sketch how to adapt this to get the log squared and approximation. Karthik? Right, so the log squared and approximation wow. is going to follow a similar three-step recipe. We're going to, the, the, the first step is going to change from the previous approach, from the isolating parts approach. I'm going to call the first step as cover. Uh, it'll be clear why, why I call this as cover shortly. What? Can you hear me? Uh, uh, yeah, if you have any questions, uh, online participants, then please do type your questions. We can't hear you, sorry. Uh, <laughs> ah, thank you. Okay, so the, the first step is going to compute a uh, compute a cover. Uh, here we're going to. <laughs> okay, we're going to compute a collection of vertex subsets. It's going to look something like this. I'll call this collection as S. It will satisfy three properties. Firstly, every set here will contain at most one terminal. Every set in the collection S will contain at most one terminal. The LP norm of uh, cut values of sets in this collection is not too far from the optimum. It's going to be log n raised to one plus one over P. And thirdly, every vertex is present in at least one set in the collection. This is why I'm going. I'm calling this as the cover step. Every vertex is present in at least one set of this collection S, and the number of sets in the collection is also not too large. It is only order k log n. Now, once you have such a collection, you can immediately uncross it using posimodularity. What will you get if you uncross using posimodularity? You will get a partition of vertices, I'll call this partition as Q tilde, such that again, each part contains at most one terminal. The LP norm of cut values of parts in Q tilde is going to be at most the LP norm of cut values of parts in the collection S itself. Remember, uncrossing did not change, it did not increase cut values. Okay. So the LP norm of cut values of parts in Q tilde is uh, still uh, log n one raised to one plus one over p approximation to opt. And how many parts can we have? Well, when we, we start off with only k log n sets, so we cannot increase when we uncross. We cannot increase the number of sets. So the number of parts in Q tilde cannot be more than k log n. Right, so once you have the cover, you can use posimodularity to immediately uncross to get these three properties. And then finally, we have to, so at the end of this, we could have some parts which do not contain any terminals. So we have to again do some aggregation. In the isolated cuts approach, we had only one set of remaining vertices, which we could simply aggregate uh, with, with an arbitrary part. Here we could have as many as uh, K log n many sets, which do not contain any terminals. So we have to aggregate these. Okay. So that's going to be the last step. We're going to end up with a partition such that each part contains exactly one terminal and the LP norm of cut values in this partition is log squared and uh, off from off, at most log squared and off from off. Okay. So aggregate step loses something on the approximation factor. As you can see, uh, in the, after uncrossing, we had log n raised to one plus one over p. Aggregate step loses some something additional. Uh, so let, let me show you how to do the aggregate step. And then I'll briefly talk about cover. Cover is the most technical step. So I'll show you how to do the aggregate step. Uh, at the end of uh, the uncross step, this is what we had. We had this partition Q tilde. I'll, I'll use these green sets to denote this partition Q tilde. Uh, here, each part contains at most one terminal. So that we have several parts which do not contain any terminals. Uh, but remember, we had k terminals, so there should be k parts which contain exactly one terminal. And then we have these k log and other parts which do not contain any term. Now, what's the natural way to uncross this? Uh, sorry, what's the natural way to aggregate these, these parts which do not contain any terminal? Well, you look at, uh, you have only k log and such parts. 
which do not contain any terminal. So you take log in many of these parts, bucket them into, uh, into the part P1 along with the part which contains the first terminal T1. You take another log in many parts which do not contain any terminal, bucket them along with the part that contains the second terminal T2. And you keep doing this, you had only K log in many parts. So at the end of this aggregation, you would have bucketed log in many sets in log in many parts of Q tilde into each of these PRs. Right, so that, that's the aggregation step. Let's uh, analyze the approximation factor. So suppose we, we have these Q1 to QT parts, which are being bucketed into our final solution, PI. Then what is the pth power of the cut value of uh, PI? Well, it's uh, at most the pth power of the sum of the cut values of QIs. Now, again, by Jensen's inequality, you have T terms there. So the pth power of the sum of T terms is at most T raised to P minus one of the sum of the pth powers of the individual terms. Okay. Now, what was T? Well, T was log n here. We bucketed only log n many parts into each of the PIs, so T was log n. And the sum of the pth powers of two i's, well, this is in the nice form, which, which we can bound by using that second property of so, so let's finish the rest of the analysis of P1 to PK is our final solution. Look at the sum of the pth powers of these P1 through the cut values of P1 through PK. Uh, the, the, this is equal to the sum of uh, sum over I equals one to K of um, the, the log n raised to P minus one is coming from, from that inequality over there of the, and then you have the sum of the pth powers of the parts of Q tilde, which were bucketed into PI. And then you interchange this order of sum, you pull out this log n raised to P minus one. The rest of the sum is bounded by the, the second property up there. Uh, you, you have to raise that expression to the power of P. And then you, you do the algebra, you see that you, you, you will get a log n raised to two P. And then finally raise everything to one over P, you get a log squared an approximation. Question? Uh, bounded by the second property of that. It's not bounded by two, but bounded by the second property. <laughs> Once you, so the, the second property bounds the LP norm of cut values. So it, it bounds the sum of the pth powers of the cut value. So that's what you want when, you, when you're analyzing it. Right, so, so uncrossing happened via post-modularity, aggregation happened uh, and we, we analyzed the approximation factor using Jensen's inequality in aggregation. Uh, the non-trivial part of the whole approach is the cover step. And to do the cover step, uh, we, we needed a bi-criteria approximation to this other problem that I'll call an unbalanced terminal cut. I don't want to introduce a new problem at this point of the talk, but by criteria for unbalanced terminal cut was given by Bunsell et al. Uh, we use that with multiplicative weights update to get the cover step. You, you have to work a bit to, to use the by criteria there. Right, so that, those are the main results that I wanted to show you today. Uh, let me quickly tell you the open problems. Uh, so the, the, Natural open problem is to make sure that the LP norm multi way cut approximation factor uh, is at least as good as what you can get for P equals one and P equals infinity. Okay. Note that when P is infinity, what we're getting is a log squared and approximation, whereas log n approximation is already known. So one open question is whether we can get a log n approximation for LP norm multi way cut. Or going one step further, can we, uh, get an approximation factor that interpolates between the constant factor for P equals one and the log n factor for P equals infinity. So this, this is the factor that uh, would be nice to have. Right, uh, one last comment, uh, the techniques that we use, uh, the, we only relied on posimodularity and the aggregation step we analyzed via Jensen's inequality. Pretty much, uh, we didn't really use anything about graphs. There was nothing 
special to graphs that we used uh, in, in the analysis. Uh, and turns out you can also so recall the graph cut function is symmetric submodular. Uh, so there is a natural definition of multi-way cut for symmetric submodular function. Turns out uh, if you have a bicriteria approximation for this unbalanced terminal cut for symmetric submodular functions, then uh, using our three-step framework, you can immediately get this log squared and approximation for LP norm multi-way cut for symmetric submodular function. So we don't know how to get, or we don't know if it is even possible to get this bicriteria approximation for unbalanced terminal cut for symmetric submodular function. All right, uh, I'll stop here. Thank you very much for the. Lesson.